Joining me now, New York Congressman Michael Lawler and uh, Representative Lawler, you know, Neil is one of the top economists on the street and she's talking, you know, everything is about the Federal Reserve. And I do think it's interesting that their hands are tied. Before, during the pandemic, they were, be, they were able to be aggressive. They knew a recession was coming. Now, I mean, they knew, you know, they knew they wanted to make sure a recession didn't come. Now they, it looks like they're, they're trying to get a recession because so much money has been pumped into this economy. $1.9 trillion we didn't need. Uh, all of these different things. I mean, the, we are on big government overload right now. And I just, I, listen, I know your party's going through some things. I know you're very upset. You're livid about what happened with Kevin McCarthy. But what is up with the Republican Party? Is there anything that can be done? Since the debt ceiling was removed, we've added $2 trillion more. And now I think it's affecting the stock market and the bond market. Well, the reality is if we don't get our mandatory spending under control long term, we're going to continue to add debt at these levels. Uh, so we have to rein in immediately uh, discretionary spending. It's why we've been working through this appropriations process. The Biden administration increased spending by $5 trillion right. in its first two years. That's unsustainable. The jobs report today, okay, great, but wage, uh, wages are still down uh, significantly. Obviously, uh, the 30-year uh, mortgage uh, interest rate is at 8%. This is, this is out of control. Uh, I think the reality is we need to get government spending under control. We need to deal with our long-term uh, mandatory spending uh, and long-term debt. Uh, and if we don't have a plan to do that, then this is going to continue in perpetuity. And well, so that's been a big part of what the House right. Republican majority has been focusing on right. until this week. Uh, uh, well, uh, continuing to perpetuity until it can't continue anymore, right? I mean, there's, uh, there comes a point. We've talked a lot in this country about, uh, you know, pushing granny off the cliff. Right. Maybe the conversation was a decade too well, early because some people don't believe it will happen. Some people believe, like you, that word you just used, that we can do this in perpetuity. That modern monetary theory is that the government can print more and more and more. Oh, I don't, I don't, get I don't believe we can. Can. I know you, and I know and you here's don't. the challenge. If we do nothing on Social Security and Medicare, both programs are going broke. So long term, we're going to have to deal with those two programs. We're going to have to deal with the mandatory spending. Uh, we cannot continue to print new money and borrow at these rates uh, at all. I want you to take a listen to uh, President Biden spoke earlier today, uh, and uh, he had some choice words, as, as you might have imagined, for your party. Take a listen. Quite frankly, I'm sick and tired Republicans in the House saying they want to cut the deficit when all they really want to do is once again cut taxes for the very wealthy and big corporations, which will only add to the deficit. So, you know, listen, when, when, when your poll numbers are in the, in the water and in the toilet, right, break glass, open it up. What does it say? Blame Republicans and blame rich people. What do you counter that with? Or just get Jamal Bowman to pull the fire alarm. <laughs> but look, uh, this is not a revenue problem in Washington. We've had more revenue in recent years than at any point in our history. Right. This is a spending problem. Right. When you increase spending by $5 trillion, when you borrow and print new money at the levels that this administration has in the first two years, it's totally unsustainable. Both parties have been reckless in spending uh, for years. There's no question about that. But when you look at our mandatory spending the f and, the, and the refusal to do anything about it, when you look at the fact that discretionary spending is at its highest points ever, we cannot sustain this. So he can talk about tax cuts all we want. The reality is we need to both rein in spending and have economic growth. And if we don't have growth, uh, and spending continues at these levels, our deficits explode. Right. It feels like the markets are now uh, actually echoing the message that Republicans have been warning about for a long time. Uh, these interest rates that are crushing the average American, this is the result of just too much money. I think this is granny slowly going off, off the cliff at this moment right now. The, this administration's policies have made it more expensive for our seniors, for our veterans, for our young families with children. I have a 17-month-old. The grocery bills are through the roof. You're talking about four to five hundred dollars a week people can't sustain it the price of chicken at a record high uh, and you know that's that's something people rely on when you're looking at grocery bills when you're looking at gas bills this is what is crushing Americans across the country. Before I let you go, then, I, I know you're pretty upset, uh, adamant, livid, I think. Those are some good words uh, to describe what